Have you ever noticed things don't work as well as you think they should? I promise, it's not just you. It happens in electrochemistry as well. In this video, we'll describe the phenomenon known as overpotential and where it comes from using a little bit of chemistry knowledge that you may remember from high school. And if you don't remember anything from high school, we'll try to make this tough concept even easier to understand by comparing it to something you do every day. Getting out of bed. At least we hope you do it every day. Let's take the example of a water splitting device. This is a common electrochemical setup that utilizes electricity to generate hydrogen and oxygen from water. You may have done something like this as part of a laboratory experiment. The basic electrochemical cell works by setting up a voltage or potential difference between the electrodes. The potential difference makes electrons have a high energy at one end, which makes them combine with ions in the water. At the other end, electrons have a low energy, so they are removed from ions. This makes a closed circuit for the electricity, which we supply as a current, and the ions, which move on their own. You might have already expected this, but since we only pay electricity when the reaction occurs, the electric current is directly proportional to the rate of reaction. Thermodynamic calculations tell us to expect, through the free energy changes in the two reactions, a potential difference of 1.23 volts. We won't cover the thermo in this video, so please take this on faith. You can click our thermo video to watch that derivation. Let's place our system at this potential. Notice that no reaction occurs. To get the reaction to run at an appreciable rate, we have to increase the voltage. When these reactions are run, they are typically performed at a voltage of around 1.6 volts. This may not sound like a lot, but a little voltage goes a long way. You might remember Ohm's law, which says that the electrical power is equal to the product of a voltage and a current. So this extra potential, the overpotential, means that we have to spend more energy than we would like to accomplish a task. Sound familiar? Some of this overpotential comes from the electrical resistance in the system, or from the resistance of ions' ability to transport to the surface. But these only make up part of the overpotential. What we'll focus on today is the kinetic overpotential the additional voltage required due to inherent barriers of chemical reactions. Now, we'll explore kinetic overpotential in context of getting out of bed. Since the kinetics of water splitting are quite complex, we will look at the simpler reaction of A to B, which has a reaction diagram something like this. The conclusions that we draw can still be applied to the electrolyzer. Let's look at the A side of the reaction in question. From thermodynamics, we can expect that things with higher energy are less stable. So in this diagram, the reactants are preferable to the products. This explains why we have to put energy into the process to make it happen. As A is becoming B, it goes through a very unstable state in the middle. This creates the hump of energy. If we were going to describe this with respect to you getting up in the morning, we might say that the reactant is you soundly asleep in bed and you having gotten up and ready to face the day is the product. In the middle, the half-awake stumbling associated with actually getting out of bed takes more energy than just being up. This uncomfortable transition state makes kinetic barriers. If you've studied the Arrhenius equation, this barrier is the activation energy term. You might realize from the form of the Arrhenius equation that the speed of the reaction is related to the energy barrier. The smaller the barrier, the faster the reaction goes. This makes sense to us. The more uncomfortable it is to get out of bed, the harder it is to do, and vice versa. You might also notice that the Arrhenius equation depends on temperature. When the temperature is warmer, molecules get excited more easily, and you have the energy to cross the barrier better. The temperature is analogous to, you guessed it, temperature in your house. When it's warmer outside, it's certainly easier to leave your warm, cozy bed. If we were working with thermal reactions, we'd stop here, and the only way to get the reaction to move faster would be to turn up the thermostat. However, this naturally has its limits, as high temperatures can be expensive to work with and may have unintended consequences. For instance, water splitting at high temperature might have risk of combustion. Let's clean things up and talk about electrochemistry now where we have another handle besides temperature to control the reaction. Let's say you could control how many hours of sleep you had the previous night. If you did that, you might have more energy lying in bed relative to going about your day. In fact, let's say you slept a full 24 hours beforehand. Your energy compared to the final energy would be quite high. There would hardly be a barrier at all to the reaction. In practice, 
Changing the starting energy of the reaction is accomplished by changing the energy of the electron, which, as we said in the beginning, is directly related to changing the voltage of the cell. You might notice that the barrier increases a little bit as well. Naturally, when you're in bed for a long time, it gets harder to get out, so you can't get a perfect improvement from just sleeping longer. Thermodynamics predicts that when the starting and ending energies are equal, you have equilibrium. This gives us the value of the expected potential, 1.23 volts. But even at this potential, we have a significant barrier. Needing to apply potential to produce an appreciable rate by shrinking this barrier is the overpotential. This is sort of how you always need to have more than 8 hours of sleep to actually get a good night's rest. Electrochemists who study catalysis look for other methods to reduce the barrier besides the application of potential. For instance, reactions with different materials can change the energy of the reactants or the products. Maybe you have a very comfortable sweater you're going to wear once you get up. Another strategy might be to stabilize an intermediate. Maybe it's easier for you to get up if you take a few minutes to watch electrochemistry videos in bed along the way. So the next time something doesn't work, or you hear about inefficiencies in electrochemical hydrogen production, think about how hard it is to get up in the morning. Please like and subscribe.